guys, and welcome to a little watercolor and chat through my latest very involved colorful painting of some tigers in the jungle. So I always start these more involved pieces with just a very light colored pencil sketch on my favorite paper, Arches Cold Pressed Watercolor Paper. First, I go ahead and I activate my watercolors by just spritzing them. And I start this off with a wet on wet technique for the background. Um, so I go ahead and I wet the entire block of watercolor paper. It is worth noting that I use a block for these kind of pieces because they do get quite wet and there are numerous layers involved and if I don't use a block then you have to stretch the paper or else it'll buckle and I very much don't enjoy stretching the paper so the block is where it's at. The next step is painting the first layer on the tigers. This dries pretty light, a lot um, more light than you put it on. So these tigers require a couple layers. But for the first layer, I just try to get a little bit of variation in terms of saturation and shadow and color. And that's about it. The next step is the second background layer. Now, this layer is basically defining the shadows and the sunny bits of the background, and it's in a subtractive technique, so I go around each of the little bits of foliage that I added to the piece um, in sort of different colors and tones, and um, I very meticulously kind of cut them out of the background so that they're able to pop in the foreground. Um, I suppose that I could have done this using masking fluid, but that would have just taken an obscenely long time. And the truth is, um, I had this piece going just in the studio for a couple months and I would just kind of incrementally work on it and because I had no time pressure to finish it, I actually just found the sort of coloring around the foliage quite relaxing and enjoyable, almost like an adult coloring book. So now I am painting the second layer on the tigers. And this layer I start to define a lot more of um, the shadows and I get a lot more sort of saturated in uh, different bits of the tigers to add some points of interest. So here, depending on where the tiger's limbs and nose and facial features and stuff are, um, I actually go ahead and I paint around things like the nose and then I leave it to dry for a little bit and it'll dry just enough to where you still get a little bit of definition. If I had painted it all right away, it would all be running into each other in the same color. But um, this is just a little trick um, to get not a hard line, but kind of a, a soft line. Now it is time for some more adult coloring like activity. And that is just painting in every little bit of foliage. And let me tell you, there are a lot of plants on this piece. Um, creating the plants was actually 
pretty fun because they are completely made up out of my mind. Um, they don't really exist in real life. I mean, some of them look like palm trees and, and roses and stuff like that, but they're they're totally made up plants. They're a little bit Seussian in a way. And um, I just kind of played around with different color palettes. Um, I really enjoyed kind of uh, working with gradients and I think that watercolor is just the best medium for getting some some wonderful gradients and um, I just had fun with it initially I was going for more plant-like colors and I was actually trying to keep a limited color palette on this piece but you'll see what ends up happening Now it's time for, as I always say in these pieces, one of my favorite parts, um, giving the characters little personalities. I always feel like this is the time in the piece where they really come to life and I can almost like imagine what they're thinking and give them like little different scenarios and why they're in the jungle and stuff like that. Um, so I don't know, I, I have fun with my characters in that way. I spend quite a bit of time with them in the end. And so I use a micron pen for their faces and then I just go in with this thin number two brush and I just go ahead and add um, the stripes. For this first tiger, I did draw in um, to define the stripes, but then for the rest of them, I just completely freeformed the stripes. And adding stripes to these bad boys was also very gratifying because I felt I feel like they became they went from like just these weird orange animals to actual tigers. So as you can see, as I painted more and more tigers, I got a lot more proficient and fast at stripe painting. That just naturally happens. The same thing happened with painting in the bodies. The first one is always going to be kind of um, the worst, honestly. <laughs> Usually you just don't quite know what's going on and then you end up figuring it out. Um, I do always do like little practice drawings before I do these big pieces. So in this case, I did a couple of practice tigers to get the technique right. Um, I didn't do any practice foliage and honestly, I didn't really put together a color palette or anything. So I was totally winging it. So around this point, you can see where I get a little bit more bold and add like some reds and pinks and then it's about to just fly completely off the chain in a second. Yes, yeah, so here we are. This is the point where I just completely let go and went incredibly crazy and had a lot of fun with all of the gradients and just embraced all of the colors of the rainbow for this jungle. And you know what? I don't regret it. When it comes to painting this foliage, I definitely did not want to go back and do multiple layers so I just made sure that the paint was saturated enough and um, 
the colors were interesting enough to where I could just accomplish this in one. And another one of my favorite things about doing these kind of crazy detailed pieces where a lot of stuff is going on is that you can add little hidden Easter eggs and stuff. And so here's a little snake um, slithering its way through the jungle. And when painting these plants, I eventually got into a pretty good flow. Um, so I would just kind of paint part of one a lot of times, and if I needed to let it dry to put another color next to it, I would just jump around all over the page and kind of try to be balanced with how I was spreading out the colors and, uh, and stuff like that and do a lot of stepping back and, I don't know, just kind of have fun with, with the piece. And voila, here you have the final piece, the tigers chilling in the jungle. I, as per usual, have made a limited run of prints that I have available on Etsy of this piece and I left the link below. I do hope you enjoyed this watercolor and chat and I will talk to you guys again soon. TTFN.